Universal Studios Japan has reopened after being closed for months. There's new procedures with wearing masks, temperature checks, social distance character greetings, and we even get to see parts of Super Nintendo World, which is opening sometime. We don't know anymore. <laughs> but we're gonna take a look at that today. Hey fellow explorers, my name is Chris, AKA TVR Explorer, and I help you plan the perfect trip to Asia and its theme parks. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new videos as we upload them. Universal Studios Japan started soft opening on June 8th, and they're only allowing guests who have annual passes that live in Osaka Prefecture. So they're limiting the number of guests to kind of ease the park and let more people in as time goes on. And because of that, Explorer Parker headed on over to you, 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 you. Explorer Parker, who lives in Osaka, headed on over to Universal Studios Japan to get videos and report on everything that has changed at the park. I live over near Tokyo Disney Resort, so I can't go to Universal Studios Japan right now. But Parker was there for us, and we're gonna go and take a look at everything that is different. Universal Studios Japan is right outside the train station, which is pretty easy to get to. You just walk through Universal City. There's tons of restaurants which are open now. And of course, there's the big Universal Studios store that has a ton of merchandise. <laughs> I love it when everyone waves. And just outside the park, there's a sign telling you that they're going to be taking your temperature. And it's in multiple languages, so that's good. And you can see on the ground there are markers. It's not busy enough to have to use them, but I'm sure that would be used first thing in the morning once it gets a little bit busier. <laughs> Love the sign that says welcome back. And here are the tents where they take your temperature. Pretty quick. There's also a tracing system set up by the prefecture of Osaka that you're asked to register when you enter the park, but it's more of an optional thing. It's not mandatory. They're only laying annual pass holders in right now, so it's pretty light on the crowds. The first thing you notice are the character greetings. So we have Winnie and Woody the Woodpecker. They're always at the front and they're just kind of roaming around. And you'll see other characters. They're going to be behind these blue lines. So you have to stand behind there and you can't take your pictures with them anymore. You just have to take a picture from afar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cookie Monster. I love you. <laughs> and then we have the minions behind the blue line. <laughs> and you just take your pictures. I'm not too sure how that's going to work when it gets busy. Because it looks like it's not really distancing people when they're behind the line. But I guess we'll have to wait and see how that goes. In Jurassic Park, we have Drymon. He has a special little show that's going on right now. And he's here with the Velociraptor. <laughs> uh, I love the mashups that they end up doing in this park. It's so wonderful. You can see on the ground they have the blue lines again. They kind of have people spaced out apart, so I guess that kind of works. I mean, nothing's going to be perfect. As for the entertainment, on the ground they have the social distancing markers, similar to what you saw in the drive on there. Yeah, people space themselves out pretty good. Again, I'm not too sure how this is going to work once it gets really busy, if they're going to turn people away or what. I'm not too sure. But then we have this show, which makes it look very crowded. Hmm. But they do have the, the social distancing markers there. However, at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, the entertainment outside doesn't have social distancing markers on the ground. Which I am not too sure why they're doing that. As you can see, the wait times here, they're fairly low because they're only allowing annual pass holders within Osaka to come in. And you can tell because the flying dinosaur is at 30 minutes. On a normal day, that's not even considered busy, it's at least two and a half hours. So you can tell it's pretty quiet. 
So as of right now, between June 8th to the 15th, they're only allowing annual pass holders that live in Osaka Prefecture in. And then after that, they're going to start slowly opening it up for more guests to buy day tickets to come in. And just walking around the park, you can see it's fairly quiet. And this was on a Monday afternoon, so no surprise there. Not everything was open either. Like a lot of the food stands outside, some of them were not open, but the restaurants were open, of course. And we have the Minions area, really cute. And they still have a lot of the Easter decorations up. <laughs> those eggs, are, those eggs are something else. <laughs> Decoration is always really cute. And you can see, again, the blue social distancing markers for lining up to go into the attractions. I love just walking around Universal Studios Japan. It's so relaxing. Again, more social distancing markers. <laughs> they're everywhere. At least they're nice and consistent with the coloring. Makes it easy to figure out what you're supposed to do. These crowd levels are every theme park fan's dream. <laughs> Next to nobody around, low wait times, leisurely, but we know that's not sustainable. <laughs> and everyone's wearing masks because you're supposed to, and people follow that rule pretty closely. I mean, wearing a mask in Japan is part of the culture anyway, so it's not that difficult for everyone to, to wear it. <laughs> These, I love the eggs throughout the park with all the Easter stuff. This is ridiculously cute. And this is the kids area. So they have Snoopy and Hello Kitty, Sesame Street. Very colorful, very cute. And you can see, yeah, there's not a lot of people here. Of those eggs. Those eggs get me every time. Then heading on over to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, there's a very long walkway to get into the area, and this is usually packed with people. So it's a very leisurely walk, very relaxing, and I love the transition going into the Wizarding World. And the crowd levels are very telling as well. This is usually wall-to-wall -wall people. This is the busiest part of Universal Studios Japan on a, on a regular day. Then we can see again the social distancing markers on the ground. This one's just right outside the washrooms. And they also have them in the stores. Now let's talk about the attractions. So this leads up <laughs> all the way up to the Forbidden Journey. <laughs> These <laughs> distancing markers. That would have taken some time to set up. I don't envy the person that had to do this. <laughs> it is throughout the entire queue and even before that, as you saw before. You're asked to sanitize your hands before and after getting on an attraction and also before going into any restaurants or shops. Typically, this attraction will have anywhere between an hour, hour and a half wait on average, and sometimes even higher. Even though it's not busy, they're making us walk pretty, pretty far, <laughs> pretty far around. Now here we're going to see some different signage. So see the red boxes telling you where not to, to lean up against. Because the attraction queue kind of zigzags, so it looks like they're trying to distance people when the line is going to be zigzagging. Then we finally get inside, and again we see the, the red telling you where not to stand. 
And this is usually wall to wall people. Like, it's claustrophobic. And there's next to nobody here. For Jaws, they seat you on every other row. You can see that there. Jaws is wonderful. Ugh, I love that we still have it in Japan. That's great. And then over in the Jurassic Park queue, same thing, blue. And you do have to wear your mask, even though you're probably gonna get it soaking wet. <laughs> now heading on over to the Attack on Titan attraction. So this is an overlay with Cool Japan. Typically, it is space fantasy which is an indoor coaster. It's just themed to Attack on Titan. So again, we see the distancing markers of the blue here. Now the thing with this attraction is it is VR and you have to put on VR goggles. Of course, those are sanitized. And the one thing you have to be mindful of is when you have your mask on, because you have to have your mask on and then you put the VR goggles on. If the mask is not on, if it's up too high, you're gonna fog up your VR goggles and you're not going to be able to see anything so be mindful of that and the goggles are on tight so once it's on you're not really going to be able to do anything now for the attractions that require 3d glasses they are sanitized and you're asked to sanitize your hands before you grab them and everything so that's that's really good for the restaurants again you see these blue markers so pretty easy to figure out where to stand before you go into a restaurant, you have to scan the QR code that you get, that you register for. There's signage everywhere, so you can register for that. And as for the distancing, you can see here they took out a whole bunch of the chairs for inside the restaurant. And then also outside as well. So everyone's kind of facing the same direction. Near the end of the day, the park is practically empty. More empty than it was earlier in the day. The park is closing at seven o'clock, which is fairly early. Most days it's either eight or nine. And then over at Universal City Walk, next to nobody here. Usually this is packed once the park closes because everyone wants to get something to eat and there's, there's tons of choices here. From the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, you can see parts of Super Nintendo World. They tried to hide it, but obviously it's a little difficult to do it completely, but this is kind of what it looks like. Hmm. I'm super excited for Super Nintendo World. I'm super excited for Super Nintendo World. <laughs> Let's keep that one in there. Uh, I. I cannot wait for that to open. Uh, it was supposed to open in the summer of this year, but you know, with the whole pandemic and all that, that has changed. Uh, they haven't said anything yet as to what's happening with the opening of it, but we'll have to just wait and see. Until then, I'm gonna have to get my Nintendo fix from playing Animal Crossing. Uh, I play way too much of it. <laughs> <laughs> like most people and also heading on over to the Nintendo store the official Nintendo store in Shibuya Let me know what you think of the new procedures at Universal Studios Japan Or just let me know how excited you are for Super Nintendo World Like I said if it wasn't apparent already, I am really excited for it So yeah, just let me know in the comments and I'll be in the comments for a little bit All right explorers. We will talk to you very soon